Well, hey, leader, and welcome to another episode of the L3 Leadership Podcast, where we are obsessed with helping you grow to your maximum potential and to maximize the impact of your leadership. My name is Doug Smith, and I am your host, and today's episode is brought to you by my friends at Baritone Advisors. We also recorded this episode live from the new Return.com studio. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here, and I hope that you'll enjoy our content and become a subscriber. Know that you can also watch all of our episodes over on our YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed there as well. And as always, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and it's impacted your life, it would mean the world to me if you would leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever app you listen to podcasts through. That really does help us to grow our audience and reach more leaders, so thank you in advance for that. Well, Leader, in this week's episode, you're going to hear me being interviewed by my friend David McGlennon for his podcast, In the Growth Space. David's been a longtime friend and mentor in my life, and he is a phenomenal leader and business coach, and it was an honor to be on his podcast and sit in the interviewee seat rather than the interviewer seat. And after we did the interview, I just thought, hey, this would be a great episode to share with all of you. And so I hope that this will add value to your life. In the episode, you'll hear me talk about the pivotal moments of growth in my journey, why you need a long-term perspective in leadership, why suffering has been the greatest source of growth in my life, how to connect with mentors, and so much more. And I think you're going to love this episode. But before we dive in, just a few announcements. This episode of the L3 Leadership Podcast is sponsored by Baratung Advisors. The financial advisors at Baratung Advisors help educate and empower clients to make informed financial decisions. You can find out how Baratung Advisors can help you develop a customized financial plan for your financial future by visiting their website at baratungadvisors.com. That's B-E-R-A-T-U-N-G advisors.com. Securities and investment products and services offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC, Baritung Advisors, LPL Financial, and L3 Leadership are separate entities. I also want to thank our sponsor, Henny Jewelers. They're a jeweler owned by my friend and mentor, John Henny. And my wife, Laura, and I got our engagement and wedding rings through Henny Jewelers and had an incredible experience. And not only do they have great jewelry, but they also invest in people. In fact, for every couple that comes in engaged, they give them a book to help them prepare for marriage. And we just love that. So if you're in need of a good jeweler, check out hennyjewelers.com. And I also want to thank our new sponsor, Return.com. And Leader, let me just ask you this. Have you ever had an interest in investing in real estate? Well, now for as little as $500, you can become a commercial real estate investor. Just visit Return.com to learn more. That's R-E-I-T-U-R-N.com. Investing involves risk. Please consult the Return Offering Circular if you're interested in investing. And with all that being said, here's me being interviewed by my friend, David McGlynn. Well, hey, Doug, welcome to the podcast, man. I am so excited to have you here. It's like having a rock star on my podcast, dude. I don't know about that. It's a, it's a great joy. I, don't, I forget how many years it's been now since we've known each other, but uh, it's just been such a joy to watch you grow and develop and make an impact on so many leaders' lives. And and I'm one of them. You've uh, Every time we meet, I'm always challenged to grow and uh, excited. So oh, I can't wait for our conversation. Yeah, man, me too. You know, I, I tell you, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the podcast not only are you a leader who I have really admired and 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 watched your growth, um, I, but but you're just exciting and and you have this passion for growth and and, and this passion for leadership, and, and I just really really love that. And 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 I I would love to know what got you interested in you know personal growth and leadership. You know, I back I know it's been a number of years, but but what what was the catalyst for you? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, um, you know, the first eighteen years of my life, I didn't live intentional at all. I was the the kid that barely graduated high school. I had an under, I think I had a one point six GPA. Uh, had to go to summer school every single year um, just to get to the next grade. And really, even in middle school, I had made the determination that I would never really amount to anything. Uh, mm. I thought I would just. My dad's a bus driver, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I just thought, hey, I'll just follow my dad's footsteps. Uh, And so fast forward my senior year of high school, uh, my mom had a rare nerve disease in her legs. She ended up passing away. And, you know, I won't share the whole story, but through that experience, uh, Christ came into my life and really transformed my life. I met my wife and her family and her family was totally different than the one I had grown up in. Uh, Her dad Mm -hmm. is the dean of admission at Carnegie Mellon. He was a a leader. And he really put it came around me, put his arm around me and said, Doug, you're a leader. You have potential. You're going to go to college. And it was really the first time in my life as a young man that anyone had spoken anything like that over me. Mm-hmm. And 
as a result of that relationship, started going to church with that family and started interning at the church under a man that we, I think we both know, Larry Betancourt. Yep. And the leadership edge, it was so interesting. You know, I didn't even know what an internship was. I really just started interning because I thought it would impress my wife at the time <laughs> that I was interning at a church. Uh, yeah. It didn't, side note. Um, <laughs> side note, it didn't. That's funny. <laughs> uh, but looking back, uh, I, I remember Larry, as part of the internship, he would bring in different leaders like yourself uh, from the community who were doing great things. And they would come and talk to us for 30 to 60 minutes. And he just said, Hey, if, if anything that David said resonated with you, um, you should take him out to, to coffee and ask him to mentor you and come with questions. And he gave us this whole process. And mm. as I started listening to, to different people talk, something just went off in me. And he ended up also cool. giving me a John Maxwell CD. I know we're both Maxwell fans. Yeah. And I still remember it was called Standing Tall. It was a CD. Nice. Um, I and it. I put it in my CD player. And it was the first time I ever listened to anything on personal growth. And I loved the lesson so much that I actually transcribed it word for word because I didn't know it came with notes. Of course, with Maxwell, wow. it had notes. Yes. Um, but <laughs> after that, I called Larry and I said, something in me just happened. Give me everything you have like this. And I just want to grow as much as I can. And so he gave me binders full of Maxwell CDs. And for probably three to five years, I would spend two to three hours a night, no exaggeration, listening to leadership development content. And that was really the start of the catalyst of my personal growth uh, journey. Wow. You know, there's something that you said um, that I want to go back and revisit for just a second. So your your, your now father-in-law really spoke words of life into you and and in and believed in you maybe even before you believed in yourself and I'd love for you to speak into that what was that like for you how did that feel well yeah I'll rewind a little bit more in my journey um three three significant moments in my life one was before I lost my mom uh my mm-hmm. high school principal uh I got in trouble and I, I think me and my friend were in the office for the 10,000th time. And he just shook his head at us and he said, guys, you're in here all the time. Uh, and I guess all I have to say to you is you're both leaders and you influence mm. people and people follow you. And you can either use that influence for good or you can use that influence for bad. And right now you're using it for bad. And I would encourage you to use it for good. So technically, he was the first person that ever told me I had leadership potential. How that felt, I walked out of that meeting and looked at my friend and went, can you believe this guy thinks we're leaders? Like I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Didn't even like give it a second thought. Yeah. But then as I met my father-in-law, you know, he said it and it was a second time and it was just like, hmm, hmm. my life was starting to turn around. And then the hmm. third person was Larry who came into my life. And I thought, yeah. maybe, maybe I do have potential. Maybe I do have giftings inside of me that I never knew I had. And maybe I can actually do something significant with my life. And I think there were still a lot of question marks, but it was, mm. again, here we are, it's been 20 years since I had those conversations and I'm still talking about them. And so That's I always true. tell leaders, you have no idea the impact what just a few words of encouragement mm. can have, especially on a young person. It can literally mm. change the trajectory of their life. And I'm forever grateful for all of those who have spoken encouragement over me. Yeah, man. Well, and, and, and I, 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 I want to just kind of pull out of you for a second, uh, like the, the, the feeling part of that growth. Cause you know, so let me ask you this. It's kind of a, it's kind of a silly question, but this popped into my head. So I'm going to ask it. So when, when you've, you know, gone through different growth seasons of your life. So, you know, when you've, you were 18 and, and, you know, you made that transition and started, you know, to grow and transcribe the, the John Maxwell CDs. It, it, what was that like? I mean, was it like, was it, was it super easy? Was it hard? What did that feel like? Cause I think, and, and the reason why I ask it is because I think that when we talk about growth, that everybody thinks it's like, Oh, great. Let's just listen to a CD or listen to a podcast or maybe read a book and instantly, you know, Hey, we're, you know, we grew, woo, you know, but it, you know, you and I both know it doesn't happen that way. So I'm just kind of curious, like what, it, <laughs> what it felt like for you. Yeah. Uh, if we talk about emotion, so a feeling at one side of it was exhilarating. I, I yeah. think the reason growth can even be addicting, dare I say, is because there's no finish line. There's, <laughs> right, there's right. no end to how far we can go. And to realize that we can actually grow and become more than we were yesterday is one of the most mm. exciting things in life. In fact, you know, I'm mentioning Maxwell a lot, but one of his definitions of success is success is knowing your purpose in life, growing to your maximum potential 
and sowing mm. seeds to benefit others. And that yeah. growing, you know, I've heard another quote say it this way, that uh, growth equals happiness. And if you want to be happy for the rest of your life in any area of your life, you have to become a growing person. Mm -hmm. And so if you want a happy marriage, have a growing marriage. If you want a happy company, have a growing company. And I'm 20 years into this growth journey and I'm still living out that exhilarating side. So, <laughs> so that's the fun side of it. Like yeah. the vision that you could be more tomorrow than you are today, that will keep you energized the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. To your other point... <laughs> You know, one of my favorite messages that I preach everywhere is is faithfulness and being faithful. Yeah. You know, as exciting as the ex exhilarating side is of wow, I could have this bright future. That bright future, at least what you're seeing in your heart, maybe 20 years away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. re realistically. Um, and I think the younger you are, the harder it is to be patient. But the yeah. older and the wiser you get and the longer you grow, the more you recognize. Um, I don't want to get somewhere ahead of, I don't want to get ahead of my skis in, in one way. So I don't yeah. want to grow so fast that I get to a place that is not sustainable in my life. And so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. growth has been a 20 year journey. You know, people look at me now and say, how did you become assistant executive director at Light of Life? And how did you build L3 leadership? It's like, well, yeah. I've been growing two or three, you know, for 20 years and, yeah. you know, listening to lessons and all of that is just part of it. Part of it is actually getting real life experience in the arena. You right. know, I, I think the hard part when you start your growth journey is all you have to live on is a bunch of theories. Mm -hmm. And that was really challenging for me because I felt like I was just a theory person for so long, but sure. putting in the practice day in and day out and actually getting real world leadership experience or real world growth experience, that's mm -hmm. what's going to actually, and, and to be honest with you is, that's that's the most exciting part of the journey. The exciting part of getting to a destination or getting a position or getting a certain amount of money, like that excitement lasts a day or two. Right, right. But it, it's looking back and saying, wow, I can't, I remember who I was when I was 18 years old and I can't even fathom who I am today and where growth has taken me. I think that's the exciting yeah. part that'll keep you going through the hard times. Man, yeah, it's so, you know, it's it's so good. And I'm so glad that you mentioned the um you know just the 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 endurance part of it because you know if if you've ever I know you have you've run you've run a marathon and and right. you know if you run a marathon like you're running a 50 yard dash man it isn't going to go well because you're going to crash and burn and and I know the same thing is true with leadership growth and and you know by by you know pacing yourself and and making sure that you're working on the fundamentals um that's that's what it takes and it's so you, you referenced you know you talked about it being in the arena and i know that your um l3 one day um uh, uh, was it a year ago that was the theme um, yeah yeah and i love the quote and i love the 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 um uh the qu the quote and from um Res Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt yeah. yeah sorry i just had a blank there for a second yeah and and because it's like it it's that or that that quote and being in the arena is is like all about rolling up your sleeves, getting dirty, getting punched in the face, you know, and all those things happen with leadership. It's not it's not easy and it's messy, man. And um and 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 growth, I think, just happens so little at a time over and over time it compounds. And I, I I'm just so glad that you you talked about that because so oftentimes. We we're, we live in a an instant gratification society, and so oftentimes we want instant gratification. We want instant leadership growth, like right now, and that that it's not the way it works, right? Yeah, uh, you know, I I'm a person of faith, as I, you've probably already come to the conclusion of. But I remember I do I do annual reviews. I'm really nerdy about my process. I, I type up it, a man. thirty to forty <laughs> page report at the end of each year. Uh, but then at the end of every decade, I actually do a decade review. And it was really interesting. When I turned 30, I'm 38 now, um, I did my decade review and I went through all of my journals and year-end reports for my 20s. And as I was spending time getting quiet before Lord, the God, I just felt like God dealt with my heart inside, not with an audible voice. And he, I just felt like he spoke to me and said, Doug, in your 20s, I gave you a foundation to build your life on. Mm. In your 30s, I'm going to give you something to say. And in your 40s, I'm going to give you a platform to say it. And for me, that just really helped me have a long view. 
Yeah. You know, my 20s, that's an entire decade. 10 years is a really long time, especially yeah. when you're living it. Um, right. But to recognize that, hey, an entire decade was built on just laying a foundation for me to even do anything with my life. And, yeah. you know, in my 30s, and I'm not there yet, but I'm not at the end yet. But, you know, God said he'd give me something to say. And I'm now on the tail end of this, I'm telling people, I don't know if I'd want to have to go through what I've had to go through in my thirties yeah. to have something to say. Um, yeah. But again, that's all part of growth. Growth can be painful, but I think if we can have a long-term perspective, you know, I'm mm-hmm. really passionate about, I, I have mastermind groups and I'm gathering leaders. And for me, my passion point for that is I want leaders to make it to their finish line. And mm-hmm. I had a leader tell me once that he believes only about 2% of leaders make it to their finish line intact to doing what they were supposed to do with their lives. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's all about longevity. Like I hope to be here another 30, 40 years. And if that's true, I'm not even halfway through my journey. And so yeah. if you can play the long view and be patient, you'll be shocked mm-hmm. at how far uh, you can go in decades. Yeah, boy, that's so true. And, and you know, something you said uh, just a moment ago, I, I got I just have to tell the listeners, Look, if you if you need a process for a year end review, Doug is your man because I I I have borrowed it and I've used it and I I love it because it's helped me to really reflect on my year and I never I actually hadn't heard you talk about you know reflecting on the decade and I probably need to do that at the end hey, of this year right <laughs> big <let's> decade <laughs> come on I would love to see your notes if you do that yeah please share them with me. Yeah, six, 60, uh, 60 lessons in 60 years, maybe, or something like that. I don't know. But but I, I, I love the process that you've gone through to, to reflect because, you know, uh, we'll, we'll stay on the theme of John Maxwell quotes because he says that, you know, experience isn't the best teacher, but evaluated experience is. And when we think about evaluating our experience, it, that's it's what it takes. And there's a lot of leaders that don't take the time to downshift and just be quiet and and really reflect and so I'm I'm so inspired by you and by your process um and just want to say publicly thank you for for sharing that Oh, my pleasure. And and again, I can send you a link for it in the show notes for your listeners if they want to awesome. I've done podcast lessons on it as well as some templates for you if you're interested in that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um I I want to ask you a question about just you know, what, what's been most impactful for you, like in your leadership growth, growth, you've, you've mentioned podcasts, you've mentioned books, um, you've mentioned mentors. So of, of those things or, or something else, like what has been, um, most impactful for you in, in just your growth journey? Yeah. People aren't going to like this answer, but, uh, suffering (laughs) has been a great teacher. (laughs) Uh, and yeah. I don't think anyone wants to hear that. And listen, you know, on all the other things I would say, you need to be, do something to grow every day. I'm huge on this. Be listening yeah. to podcasts, read books, mastermind groups, which again, I could talk about in a bit, but they've been yeah. probably the greatest source of growth. But when I talked about getting in the arena, you know, I can, and, and we can go into detail on any of these, but I can name three specific seasons in my leadership journey that were the, the, the hardest seasons that I ever went through, but looking back, they caused the most growth. And, you mm. know, the first one was I went from a leader. I mentioned Larry Bettencourt, uh, yeah. before where he was, he's the greatest encourager on earth. So yeah. Doug, you can do anything. You're going to be the greatest leader year, you know? <laughs> so I felt like I could conquer the world. And then, yeah. uh, through a series of events, I ended up working for another leader in the next season of my life where, it was the exact opposite. And I felt Mm. like anything that Larry had spoken good over me was no longer true. I felt like I had Mm. no future. I felt like it was all facade and, um, and, and I was passive aggressive. I didn't know how to address, you know, having a leader above me that I didn't agree with or wanted Mm. to have hard conversations with. And for two years, I literally, I don't want to say I hated my life that that wouldn't have been true. But as Mm. far as like a work being in the arena, I did not enjoy that season at all. Mm. And I ended up I do believe it was God, but I ended up transitioning um, to another job. And funny enough, you know, they say sometimes that uh, until you learn to pass the test, you have to keep taking it. <laughs> keep and, taking the test, yeah. yeah. Well, sure. I got into a new season and I felt like I had the exact same leader in a different body over me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. you've got to be kidding me. Um, yeah. But through that horrible experience, I actually tried to get that leader fired at one point. Um, uh-huh. And I don't I won't go into the this, this story, but that ended up blowing up in my face. And I ended up for the first time in my life having to have a hard conversation Mm. and it changed everything for me. 
I would say mm. prior to that hard conversation with my boss, I was passive aggressive, which mm. I think a ton of people in organizations are. They never yeah. speak up. They don't know how to have conversations. So what do they do? They gossip. And I was the yeah. king of gossip. I loved when people came to me and complained about a leader because mm. I would just be like, well, I got more juice than you. And, and you know, it just built mm. and it was creating such a toxic culture. Mm. And so from, from that point yeah. on, I basically determined I will no longer gossip. I'll never again be passive aggressive. If I have to have a hard conversation, I will have it. And I've, I haven't been perfect in that journey, but for probably 12 years now, I've been pretty consistent in it. And that changed mm-hmm. everything. But I had not gone through those two years of suffering. Really, I guess it would end up being three or four. I don't know that I would be the person or the leader I am today. And mm-hmm. as I share about that season, I'm shocked at how many leaders let down their guard and say, I'm there. I don't know how to have hard conversations or leaders being able to draw that out of their people. And so that, that was huge. And then the third one, and again, I won't go into details, but a few years ago when I, uh, in 2020, I had a mental breakdown, at least that's what I say I had. Yeah. And, uh, one of, it was the hardest season I've ever gone through in my life. Hope I never have to go do anything like that again. But yeah. again, who I came out as on the other side of that, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't trade for millions of dollars. I'm just so grateful for the lessons learned. So, um, yeah. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to pour suffering on everyone listening to this, but I would just say, that's why you need to be in the arena. Cause yeah. let me say that someone told me once they said, Doug, let God be the architect of your growth. And here's what I know. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I don't mean to preach, but if yeah, God's the it. architect of our growth, God knows areas that we need to grow in that we aren't even aware of yet. Yeah. And he will bring people around you and resources around you to forge you in the fire, so to speak, to yeah. to basically cause you to become the person he needs you to be for whatever he's called you to do. And so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's basically been my posture, my journey of, God, you're the architect. I want to grow. I pray this prayer all the time. God, develop me as quickly and as solidly as possible. I want to grow as fast as I can. But as I was mentioning before, not so fast that I can't sustain who you call me to be. And uh, mm. But as I always tell leaders, when you pray that, be careful because God will answer it and it won't always be fun. Um, so let God be the architect yeah. of your growth. Yeah. Wow, well, man. You know, I, I thank you for sharing that because I, I think that um, too often we forget that we have to go through the fire in order to be molded, you know, and, and, and that, that those hard times are the times that we grow the most. I I look back on my own personal journey and, and, and I know it was the time actually when I moved here to Western Pennsylvania, Hmm. um, you know, I was 40 years old. I had lived my entire life in the state of Indiana and I picked up my five kids and we, you know, sold the house that we had, had built in, you know, five acres had beautiful, you know, beautiful place moved over here and, um, started basically started over again. And that, that, that process was a really painful process. I had lost my dad just prior to that. And, um, and, and and so the, but as I look back on that time, would I want to go through it again? No, definitely not. (laughs) But, but, I learned so much about myself and I grew so much through that process. So, you know, I just echo your, 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 your words because it is through those hard times, through those difficult times, you know, yes, even suffering times that we, we grow the most. And so I think that a lot of the leaders who are listening, I, I, I hope they understand that, but it's, it's also a part of the process that, that that's joyful too, in a, in a weird kind of a way it's it, cause yeah. when you're going through it, it's, it's not fun, but I used to have this, I used to have this workout partner that used to have this phrase and he'd say, you know, it doesn't have to be fun to be fun. And, you know, that's <laughs> usually when, you know, he was kicking my butt on a, on a run or, you know, we were scaling some, you know, cliff or something like that. So, wow. but, uh, but yeah, so thank you for sharing that. Um, you, you mentioned a little while ago, masterminds, and I know that you, you know, L3 has as masterminds and uh, group, you know, group, uh, the group process. What, what has that meant for you? Like being in a mastermind and, and, and growing through that mastermind process, what's, what's that meant for you? And, and maybe share a little bit about like how you discovered that and, you know, and, and, and implement it in your life. Yeah. So I mentioned, you know, suffering's probably been the greatest cause, but I could have never gone through the suffering 
had I not invested in my growth outside of it. And so that's why you don't always know what you need prepared for, but that's why you consistently need to be investing in yourself. Again, back mm-hmm. to the personal growth, like you, in my pastor Larry would always tell us, you don't see it's growth is like your hair. You don't always <laughs> see it growing month to month, but all of a sudden you need a haircut. You mm-hmm. don't see yourself growing day to day, but eventually you wake up and you're like, wow, I can't believe I'm the person you uh, I am today. And so mm-hmm. making investments in yourself daily will be essential for whenever you go through those hard seasons or go to the next level in leadership, you don't mm-hmm. always see the impact of those initially. But when you step into that, you all of a sudden say, wow, I'm so grateful that I invested all that time in a coach or in a mastermind group mm-hmm. or in podcast. So that this is what I would say is, is crucial. As far as masterminds are concerned, uh, I initially heard of them through what most people hear about the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he basically, Andrew Carnegie hired him to, to study the, I think, top 500 most wealthiest and influential leaders of that time. And one of the characteristics he found in all of them were they were all in what he called a mastermind alliance. And all that meant was they were in groups of small groups, usually six to 12 leaders that met together on a consistent basis in order to help each other grow, hold each other accountable and to challenge each other. And so when I read that, I thought I want to be in that. And I I couldn't find any groups that I wanted to, that I joined that I felt like hit hit that the way I wanted it to hit. So we started creating our own. And so I've been in mastermind groups now for eight years. Um, And the way I describe it to leaders is one of our core values at L3 is community. And we believe that no leader should ever do life alone, but in community. Uh, Mm -hmm. And yet I think Henry Cloud shared once that he believes statistically 80% of leaders when asked said that they don't have a single person that they can actually confide in. Mm -hmm. And so the reason masterminds are important the way we share it is we want every leader on earth to have a place where they're fully known, fully loved and fully challenged. So let Mm, me break that down. Fully known is you have a place where you can come and fully be you. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to be someone else. You can just bring your whole being and then you'll be fully loved. You can, you'll be fully loved right where you're at. But then the most important part is you'll also be fully challenged. Mm. And so I often say, you know, oftentimes for me, I'm a words of affirmation guy. I want a hug and a pat on the back, but often what I need is literally a slap in the face. And um, we need a, yeah, I'm we need you, a brother. place. Yeah. Like, like yeah. you said, your coach, like we need people to get in our face and say, Doug, you're better than this. You can do better than this. You're sharper than this. Let's go quit being a whiny baby. And, um, and yeah. having that is crucial. And why yeah. mastermind groups that are consistent matters, it often takes six months to a year to even get to a place where you feel like you could be fully known, loved, and challenged. Yeah. And so to have groups that that meet for years where you're consistently having that are great. Uh, and mm. if you don't know how mastermind groups are run, just to break it down, uh, really for us, I think the most valuable part is twofold. One is hot seats. So it's an opportunity every time you're with a group to share something that you're going through. It could be a challenge in your business. It could be a challenge in leadership. It could be a challenge at home and you share it. And then all of a sudden you have 10 to 12 other people who are going to share their experiences, their networks, their advice, and hopefully you walk away with a game plan. And so um, it's been amazing to see what's happened in it through our mastermind groups, but they've clearly been one of the greatest sources of growth in my life. Yeah, man, that's that's so great. Thank you for sharing that. I, I you know, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, it, we we uh, you know we we call them inner circle groups. You know, at at Impact Leadership, and and it's you know it's the same idea. It's being able to to be in community with with each other and get the challenge where we need it, but also be loved where we need to be loved as well, and and have people believe in us when we need that belief. And uh, I, I so appreciate that. And um, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, um, you, you know, you, you talk to leaders in, in a number of different spaces, um, a number of different generations, you've got older leaders, you've got younger leaders, um, that you talk to. What's a, what's a common theme that you talk with leaders about? Like what's one thing, or maybe a couple of things that, that you tend to be talking to leaders about and maybe, Maybe you would like them to know, you know, the, the maybe the older leaders to know about the younger leaders, and the younger leaders to know about the older leaders, because you're kind of in that in that middle uh, middle part of the uh, the generational uh, spectrum. Yeah, as far as uh, the gaps, what I found, and part of the reason we started L3 was I recognized. Um, I mentioned those meetings that we had with Larry, where he would ask yeah. us to to ask people out to coffee from the community. Well, I started doing that. I did that for ten years, and. 
I was so grateful that I got to spend time with all these leaders who were at the the end of their life or their end of their career. And they had all this experience that I could just soak up. And what I found was so many of them were so hungry to invest in the next generation. They don't need another paycheck. They don't need more money. They now are at the significant stage of their life and they just want to make an impact. The problem is they don't know how to connect with the next generation (laughs) or to find them. And so I don't want to say they're insecure, but they're fearful of like, I don't, how am I going to find young people to mentor? And then yeah. you have young leaders who are longing to be mentored and longing to be poured into, but they don't know how to connect. And so part of what mm-hmm. I want to do is just try to bridge the gap. And what and I, I have an entire process I could share you know, probably at another time for young mm-hmm. leaders on how to get meetings with, with senior leaders because they want to pour into you. So if you're an emerging leader listening to this, yeah. I would just tell you, you would be shocked at who would meet with you. In fact, I mentioned I did that for 10 years. That's really why I started the podcast. All of my yeah. peers start saying, you get to spend time with Dave McLennan. I can't believe that. <laughs> and I'd say, I can't promise you, but he probably would spend time with you too if he would just ask. Yeah. Um, no pressure, yeah. Dave. Um, yeah, right, right. <laughs> but great. but that would be my encouragement to younger leaders, and you'd be shocked. Yeah. And and I would give you a whole process for that. Um, and as far as traits, I'm looking for. Yeah, when I interview senior leaders, I, I just want to know what's important. And the, the over yeah. <laughs> the the recurring yeah. theme there is less and less. Like, there's not you know, what's really important is just impacting lives when people get to the end of their journey. And they just, they talk about two things that really impacted me as a young leader. One, I always like to ask, you know, if you could go back and have coffee with yourself at any age, what age would that be? And what would you tell that version? And Mm -hmm. statistically, I'd probably say 25%, which is pretty big percent on answering that. They said, I would go back to myself when I was in my young emerging leader years. And I would just tell them it's going to happen. Like it's going to happen relax. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Don't drive so hard trying to achieve it. Like everything that's in your heart is going to happen. As we were talking about earlier, it's just not going to happen in your timing or the timing you want. And your greatest regret will be if you try to go there as fast as you can, and you literally miss every season of your life and all the moments that you were intended to enjoy, to enjoy at that moment, you mm. missed out on because you were chasing something. So that, yeah. that's that been really significant to yeah. me because I have that personality to sit yeah. down and say, I don't want to miss my kids growing up. Like right. uh, whoever I want to be in five years, like God could do something in one moment and all of a sudden, all my dreams come true. So like, I'm going to trust his clock and timing and enjoy the journey along the way. Um, that's been pretty significant there. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, so I, I love that you brought up the, the question about, you know, having coffee with, you know, the, the younger self. So I, I kind of like to, 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 to turn that on you and say, uh-huh. you know, what would you, have, what, you know, what age would you, would you have coffee with of your younger self? And, 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 you know, what would you, uh, what would you want to ask and say? Yeah. Two answers to this. One, the one that no one wants to hear, but um, <laughs> because because of the way my life turned out, I wouldn't change anything. Um, <laughs> so, but I say like, yeah, it could have gone a totally different direction. I could be, my life could be an absolute, I could, I could not be on the planet right now had my life gone one direction. So, so that said, I would just say, you know, the things that I would have tried to avoid by telling myself them, I would have missed out going back to the suffering. I would have missed out on becoming the person that I am today by going through them. So that's my, my cliche answer. Hey, sure. go through your life. The, the answer. So I was, <laughs> I was super heavy growing up. I, I weighed, I think, 100 pounds in kindergarten, 200 pounds in second grade. I just posted a picture recently of myself in eighth grade. Like, I, I, I was on a baseball team. They didn't even have a jersey that could fit me. Awesome. And yeah, oh my God. and literally, like, I spent so much time when I was young worrying about, like, will a girl ever like me? Um, will I ever have a family and be happy? And I just wasted so much time worrying. Mm. Uh, and I just want to tell myself, same thing. I guess I was saying the order leaders say, like, Doug, just be intentional. Your life's going to turn out fine. Follow God and mm-hmm. everything else will take care of itself. Oh, and um, if you actually focus on clean eating and eating healthy, <laughs> you can drop this weight really, really quickly and you actually fall in love with exercise. So do that a lot it. faster and uh, things will work out for you. So that's what I, would I tell love myself. It. I love it. Well, and I was just listening to your episode uh, with Tony Horton uh, on your podcast. <laughs> and man, that was really cool. Uh, it was really cool. Oh. And I think that, you know, number one, it's cool that you had, you know, Tony Horton on your podcast. That's, that's number one, but that's also a testament to exactly what you were talking about, because you, you reached out to people, you, you were able to ask them 
you know, for some time and, and questions, and then it all led to the podcast. And, and I think that's really a great lesson for emerging leaders. Just, I want to reiterate that because by, by virtue of just reaching out to people, you would be surprised at who wants to help you, who wants to invest a little time and who doesn't love coffee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and I, yeah. And I tell people, you know, when I encourage people on this whole mentoring process, one, I always say, make a bucket list of people that you yeah. want to meet with. And literally no one should be off limits. So I made a bucket list uh, years ago. Tony Horton mm-hmm. was on that list. Uh, Clint Hurdle was on that list. Mike Tomlin was on that list. Mike Sullivan from the Penguins was on that like, And, yeah. and John Maxwell, I've got to meet with all of those people. Did right. When I made that bucket list, did I know my strategy and how I was going to get a meeting with them. No, I just had a dream that, man, how awesome would it be to spend an hour with some of these people? And yeah. then I, I couldn't start with just calling Mike Tom. It's not like I had a cell phone. So what did I have to do? You have to start where you're all, where you are. My first right. podcast episode was my father-in-law because I knew him. Yeah. I knew he would yeah. say yes. But yeah. you know, one thing leads to another. And I always tell people a great question to ask every time I'm done meeting with someone or interviewing someone on the podcast, I just say, Hey, who are one or two other people that you think would be great for me to spend time with their interview that I can either use your name and reaching out to them or that you'd be willing to introduce to me. And I'm just shocked and blown away by the amount of people that that's led to me being able to meet. So just dream big and go for it when it comes to meeting people. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll be dining with a president one day. <laughs> I love it. If you want, if you want to, we're not going to get political, but yeah. 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 No, I love yeah. that. No, that, I, that that's so great, Doug. I, I, I think just by virtue of putting, you know, putting that list together and, and just dreaming big. I, I, I just love that. It's so good. Uh, it's lesson for me as well, as, as I continue to grow myself and grow, um, you know, the people who I am, am interacting with. And so as soon as we finish this podcast, I'm probably going to ask you that question. <laughs> hey, go for it, man. And you've done pretty well. You've done pretty well. You've opened up doors for me and my network and with Paul Martinelli and things. And so I'm just appreciative yeah. of that. Well, I, it's, it's so cool to be able to watch you, but also learn from you, my friend. Uh, really, it, it's been really inspi- You're inspiring. And I, I love how process driven you are because um, that's not my tendency. And, and, and so I've been learning that, you know, kind of, you know, through, through your lens and through, you know, our friendship, um, over the years. And it's just really been cool to, to, to watch, uh, watch you, you know, in that process. So, so maybe a last question here. So you mentioned a bucket list. So who's left on your bucket list? You've, you've, you've met with (laughs) all of these people, Tony Horton, John Maxwell, you know, Clint Hurdle, Mike Tomlin. So who's, who's, who's next on your bucket list? Yeah. Oh, you can ask my assistant. The list is long. She gets, (laughs) and and every week I feel like I dump 10 more names on her. So add some more to it. Yeah. yeah. Jess, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. (laughs) <laughs> um, t- top of my list right now, and I don't, I don't know why I've just admired him for so long is Dave Ramsey. So, yeah, sure. um, mm, very cool. I, my friend got an interview with him and I think the strategy he used was pretty good. So I just have to position and wait for the timing. I've interviewed all the people around him. So the nice. seeds are there. I just needed Love to happen. It. So yeah, he'd be the top. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll just leave Anybody that. Anybody else? Uh, oh, they'll have to tell my head. John Acuff, I've been trying to get him for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and awesome. right now, so, and then there's bucket list people, to, to be fair, that, like, I think are out of my league, but are on my list. So, like, Craig Rochelle uh, is a big one. Ed Milet would love to interview him. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Erwin, Erwin McManus has been on my list forever. I'm a huge admirer yes. of his. Yes. Um, love so, those it. are the ones that come to the top of my head, but uh, I'd be yeah. happy to send you my spreadsheet of... <laughs> I have your, 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 your bucket list. No, I love yes. that, man. That's so good. So, so, um, speaking of bucket list, so, you know, first of all, you're, you're, a, you're a dad, uh, you're a father, you're, I mean, you're a, you're a husband. Um, so th- thinking about like your life as a whole, you know, what is on your bucket list, like for the next season of your life? So you're 38. So as you get you know closer to this, you know, this next decade, What's on your bucket list? What's what's next for you? Yeah. Well, one, I do recommend everyone have a bucket list. Um, I've had one for 20 years and I'm always adding to it. And so I think, again, just having it, you'd be surprised of just keeping a list like that in front of you, similar mm. to the podcast interviews of, yeah. of how something will come to the surface or something will happen. And it may not have ever happened that way if you hadn't created a bucket list. And, mm-hmm. and just a side note, really interesting study. I think it's Lou Holtz. If you study him, he was in a really depressed he was the Hall of Fame coach from Notre Dame. He was in a really 
a big season of depression at some point in his life. And his wife encouraged him to make a bucket list. Uh And he made a list, I think of 117 things. And literally it was like, I want to fly in an air force jet. I want to meet the president. I want to coach a a national football team to a national championship. And to this day, I think he's accomplished like 97 of the 117 things. And he equates it all to actually just writing it down. So that's um, cool. That's That's a little bit of background on why you should have one. Uh, As far as my bucket list, the most immediate in this season uh, with everything going on is I've wanted to write a book for 22 years, basically since I read John Maxwell's book. I'm like, I want to do this one day. Um, And as we were just talking, I just finished my first draft and we could talk about that whole process, which took a long time, but but that happened. And so now I'm stepping into the publishing thing, uh, publishing world and trying to figure out how to navigate that to get this book into the world. Mm-hmm. And, and my bucket list to ha- is to have to be a published author, author by 40. So I have about a year and a half uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Um, and that's really the next big thing. I think if I can launch that, that would be great. And then uh, really a lot of my other bucket lists, I mean, I, obviously all the travel and experiences, my wife and I are big tennis fans. I want to go to all the all the uh, the big major tournaments. We've gone major to two t- of the four. Yeah. Um, this is really nerdy. I have a 25 year timeline of all the different trips I want to take. And so I have that like kind of lined out. And so uh, <laughs> have an idea of where those will line up, but we'll see. But yeah, that's, that's so great. That's Publish so a great, book. Doug. Yeah, publish the book, man. So uh, I can't wait to read it, man. I'll be I'll be the thanks. first to uh, be in line to have you sign it for me, man. Uh, thanks. <laughs> that'd man. be awesome. That'd be awesome. Well, Doug, thank you for for sharing your heart and your heart for leadership and and just a little bit about your growth journey. I'm, I'm really grateful that um, you've you've shared some time with us here today. You know, is there anything that we didn't talk about that we should? I, I, one thing I know that I want to mention to to, to listeners is the uh, the L three one day because if uh, if anybody's looking for an amazing uh, conference, the L three one day is an amazing one day conference. Uh, you know, all about leadership. And I know that this year um, you've got an amazing uh, keynote speaker, and I'll, I'll let you share a little bit about that. But you know. Talk a little bit about one day and and, and your vision for that. Yeah, I guess, you know, the theme of today's podcast has all been about investing in yourself. And David, really, that's what your whole life and and work is about, is just investing in your growth, which is so vital. Um, And so for for me, and and I'm sure for you, we just want to provide opportunities for people to grow. And so um, we created a conference a few years ago called L3 One Day. It's going to be on February 29th, 2024, uh, right here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And our keynote speaker is Horst Schultz. Uh, who's uh-huh. the founder of the Ritz Carlton? Um, but that aside, I would just say, you know, to leave the listeners with something, you know, our I tell people at our conference every single year, I kind of cast this vision of you are one idea and mm-hmm. one connection away from changing your destiny. Yeah. And again, I'll say that one more time. You are one idea and one connection away from changing your destiny. And that's why you know, going, getting into mastermind groups or getting coaching with someone like David or being in groups or putting yourself in rooms with leaders, you have no idea the mm-hmm. one piece of content that you'll hear that may change everything. The one mm-hmm. connection you make that may change everything. But what I do know is you don't know what you miss out on when you don't take advantage of those things. So That's if true. if you're letting time go by in your life, if you know in the past year you can't say that you've invested in coaching for yourself, if you can't say that you have a personal growth plan where you're consistently, you know, listening to podcasts and reading books, if you're not in a mastermind group, if you're not going to conferences, you are missing out on huge opportunities to become more of the person that you were created to be. Mm-hmm. And some of those only opportunities will only come when you expose yourself to great ideas and great connections through things like I just talked about. And so that would be my big challenge to leave you with is go find your one idea, go find your one connection this year and watch what it does for you. Oh man, Doug, I, I, I love that. That is so great. And thank you for, for sharing all of your wisdom. Um, thank you for your passion for growth and your passion for leadership. And, um, and really thank you for your friendship, man. It's been uh, just an amazing journey and um, I'm, I'm excited to continue it on with you. Yeah, likewise, David. And, you know, I mentioned earlier several other voices that have encouraged me throughout the way, but you've certainly been one since I've met you. We both have similar passions to add value to people, and you've been that constant source of encouragement to tell me to keep going and making a difference. Um, So I just so appreciate who you are. And I love, again, watching the work that you're doing. If you're listening to this, work with David. (laughs) Find a way. There's lots of ways he can tell you, but um, you won't be disappointed. He'll take you to the next level. 
Thank you so much, Doug. I I really appreciate that. Well, Leader, thank you so much for listening to my conversation with Dave McGlennon. I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. You can find ways to connect with me and links to everything that I discussed in the show notes at l3leadership.org forward slash 398. And hey, Leader, 2024 is right around the corner. And if you want to 10x your growth next year, then I really want to challenge you to either launch or join an L3 Leadership Mastermind Group. Mastermind groups are simply groups of 6 to 12 leaders that meet together on a consistent basis for at least one year in order to help each other grow, hold each other accountable, and to do life together. For me personally, mastermind groups have been the greatest source of growth in my life over the last eight years, which is why I believe everyone needs to be in one. So if you're interested in learning more about launching or joining a group, go to l3leadership.org forward slash masterminds or email me at dougsmith at l3leadership.org. And as always, Leader, I like to end every episode with a quote, and I will quote Henry David Thoreau, who said this. He said, one is not born in the world to do everything, but to do something. Leader, find your something and give it everything that you've got. Well, I hope that this episode encouraged you. Know that my wife, Laura, and I love you. We believe in you, and I say it every episode, but don't quit. Keep leading. The world desperately needs your leadership.